I'd especially like to thank people who travelled, like the boys from Liverpool, and Joe Dwyer, and Joe Dwyer, and the boys from Belfast as well. Uh, I would like to thank the Republican Flute Bands who took, back, took part, the Copenhagen Republican Flute Band. Yeah. And the organisers of the day's event, the volunteers, Sean McAvoy, and the Republican Flute Band. I think events less are important to keep volunteers' names alive in the match they certainly do that with Sean. Uh, I'd especially like to say uh, Eddie well done for the day's route. <laughs> Pushing the boundaries as usual. But I remember in the early 80s, uh, same as Spike will remember Francis Hill, people like that. Bernie Bona will remember the oh, uh, He's still the man. Republicans couldn't have set foot in Duke Street, and it just shows you how far we have came when we marched half of Duke Street today. <laughs> so, <laughs> every time the tell us no, we push their boundaries, and it becomes a yes. So. Their numbers are dwindling. Down here, we'll do a full drink sheet. Yeah, I'll wait till this guy's finished his speech. <laughs> <laughs> hey, as I said, it's events last the day, and the last the day, they keep volunteers' names alive and keep the name of Sean McElvena alive. Oh, yeah. And I would like to introduce our main speaker today. She's a Republican legend in my eyes. She was actually arrested in this city, so it's, uh, it's nice to see her back here. Yeah. Regina, I tried to get the route to go that way, but it was too far. As I said, she's an ex-prisoner, she was an MLA, she was an MEP, and anybody that watched Martina in the European Parliament, given the Brits and the Zionists what they deserve and support yeah. of the Palestinians and the Irish people. Lifelong activist in the Republican struggle. So give a give a big welcome to Martina Anderson. A character Tommy Intersasta Fanshaw Lenny. I really am delighted uh, to be here today. I'm really honoured uh, to be asked to speak to you all, and I know. We're in a, a club and a pub and it's a time to enjoy ourselves but we're also here to remember a friend and a comrade and someone who I have known many many years and whilst I'm honoured here to be speaking I'm also heartbroken that it's 38 years since we lost volunteer Sean Michael Fennan because Sean as a very close friend and a comrade of mine's, I've decided to write out a speech. The last time that I did a commemoration for Sean, I ended up in tears. So I'm going to try not to do that today. And I hope you will indulge me just to, to listen. I, I, was, I was pretending to the boys in the back I was going to speak for an hour, but I'll only speak for half an hour. <laughs> Uh, anyway, but whilst I am honoured, I also want to acknowledge uh, the volunteer Sean Michael Fennett Flip Band because, you know, what you have done, not just in this city, but throughout Ireland, your name resonates across the 32 counties of Ireland, but also all of the Flip Bands, the three from here, the one from Liverpool, I have to say the ones here from, from, from Britain, um, really does touch the hearts of many of us back home. Oh, yeah. So a big full of us to all of you to And uh, in keeping Sean's memory alive and in honouring him in this way, I think from all of us we, we should send commemorative acknowledgement to Sean's wife Pat and to their children, Kathy, Sinead, Kira, Sarah, Patricia, Fiona, and Sean Jr. Now, I'm going to tell you a story. It was a long time ago, much longer than I care to remember. On a night uh, not so special, the, the door of my on-the-run flat, uh, I was an OTR, 
um, opened and in walked two people, one I knew and one I didn't, and that was the first night that I had met Sean Michael Fenna. Now, they say the first impressions are the lasting ones, uh, but nothing could be further from the truth with regards to Sean. But that night he came in and he spent the night, I was going to say talking, but it was really lecturing my flatmate and I. And my first impression was that Sean was an arrogant, know-it-all male, mansplaining to two young Irish Republican women. Now, Sean had an opinion on every issue imaginable, and he held very strong views about Republicans needing to conduct ourselves impeccably, especially those of us who were on the run. And we had to epitomise the highest standard of respectable behaviour. So us two young Republican women, we needed to ensure we didn't drink too much, we didn't go out, and we didn't misbehave, whatever that meant. <laughs> so this guy was wagging his finger at us and telling us, remember who you are and what you represent. And see, to be perfectly honest with you, see, after that night and that encounter with him, I could have seen him far enough away and really didn't want to see him again. But my first impression was so, so wrong. Throughout the months and the years that followed, I, like many others that knew Sean, we developed a mountain of respect for him. Sean was an inspirational leader, an impassionate man, with a deeply held view of how to advance our struggle. Sean had a strategic political mindset long in advance of any of us. Once she broke through that tough provo exterior of his, this remarkable man, he opened up and he would talk about the love of his wife, <coughs> Pat, and their beautiful daughters, and he wanted nothing but the best for all of them. He did not want his children or any children born into a partitioned Ireland to experience discrimination, inequality, oppression, or a constant life of maltreatment by a foreign government. He fought and died for a new Ireland, a united Ireland, a new society. When the twins were born two weeks before Sean was killed. One of them was a boy, Sean Jr. And of course, baby Fiona, and they made the perfect addition to the family. Whilst Sean Jr. was released from hospital, Fiona was kept in a few days. So the proud daddy insisted on having a photograph taken with baby Sean, the last photograph that was ever taken. Sean then had to go out a message. That was on the 17th of December, 1984. That message took Sean as commander of the North Armagh Brigade of the IRA to lead other comrades on a military operation. As the other comrades returned to a safe house, a mine was detonated under a Land Rover, injuring seven members of the UDR. As Sean was withdrawn from the scene, a three-person RUC police patrol came along in an armoured Ford Cortina. Sean, uncharacteristic of him, was only armed with a handgun, not enough firepower to take on the might of the heavily armed enemy. The RUC opened fire with a submachine gun hitting Sean in the back. Sean Michael Fenna was a dedicated soldier. And like so many, he knew that the British state had refused to implement the alternative. And what was that alternative? That alternative was democracy. That alternative was human rights. That alternative was civil rights. And they refused to give that to us and therefore there was only one way, and that there be no doubt, our right to resist was valid. Yep. Yep. We had to right the wrongs experienced by so many in our society, 
and Sean Michael Fenner was not going to leave it to his children to fight for the freedom that he so desperately wanted them to live and to have and enjoy. Now the political landscape in the north of Ireland has changed. It has changed utterly. And that change would not have been possible without volunteers like Sean Michael Fenna, who was not prepared to stand idly by and who gave their all. The generation that ended discrimination, that ended systematic nationalist inequality and that won our right to self-determination and those who are still involved in advancing the new phase of the struggle can be proud of all that has gone before and all that was given before and that was everything and more. I cried a river over the loss of my dear friend and comrade, Sean McElfenna. Those of us who survived are very proud, unrepentant Irish Republicans. Yep. And we are working in places and that we were once not, pre not present, not wanted, nor welcomed. And we are making to make sure the Ireland that we leave behind is the one better than what we were born into. Former Republican prisoners, former hunger strikers, former volunteers, carry the memory of Sean McElfenna with us every day in everything that we do. And whilst there's still much more to do, there is no doubt that we have made a lot of progress. And the struggle for Irish freedom is moving forward. And I believe that Sean Michael Fenna, the thinker, the leader, the strategist, the husband, the father, and the man, would be proud of what we have accomplished to date. And I believe that if he were here, he would be applying himself with the same dedication to take this over the line. I hope his wife Pat and their children realize the highest esteem that he has held, not just in Ireland, but especially here in Glasgow. And I think your attendance throughout the whole day at the commemorative event earlier and here as we all are gathered in Murphy's, I think it's an indication of how much Sean still means to us all. He will always be remembered with pride. It is heart-wrenching without doubt that those of us who survived, and we did, knowing what Pat and the seven children have missed out on. Pat McAfena lost the love of her life. She lost her soulmate. And she had seven young children. I loved Sean Michael Fenna as a comrade and a friend. And he is missed so much by so many. For as long as I can play my part, I will continue applying myself to create the United Ireland that Sean fought and died for. And I asked all of you to speak Sean Michael Fenna's name with pride. And I asked you to never forget who he was and what he represented. Playing no part now in Republican movements, either here or in Ireland. Will Sean McElvena play a very big part here in Scotland? But was it for people in Flutland for the Filipino movement here in Scotland? So I would like to thank personally the members of the volunteer Sean McElvena Republican Flutland. Thanks very much.